Jesus, daily let me go higher, higher in the school of wisdom, more of grace to know. Oh, dear, yet I pray, and higher every day, and wise and blessed Lord, in thy precious holy word. Deeper, deeper, 
blessed Holy Spirit, take me deeper still, till my life is wholly lost in Jesus and his perfect will. Oh, deeper yet I pray, and higher every day, and wise to blessed Lord, in thy precious holy word. Deeper, deeper, though it cost our trials, deeper let me go. Rooted in the holy love of Jesus, let me fruitful grow. Oh, deeper yet I pray, and higher every day, and wiser, blessed Lord. In that precious holy word, deeper, higher, every day in Jesus, till all conflict pass, finds me conquer, and in his own image, perfected at last. Oh, dear. Yet I pray, and higher every day, and wise and blessed Lord, in thy precious holy word, oh deeper yet I pray, and higher every day, and wise and blessed Lord. In thy precious holy word, in thy precious holy word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, we're going to continue our study of the gift of the word of wisdom. We began last week with, with a, just a, a real beginning effort at it, and then we went to the idea of the gifts of the Spirit in a general sense of how the Holy Spirit divides them to us, and that they are not inherent in us. I think that that is specific and that we must understand that to comprehend all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, there are other gifts that the Holy Spirit does give to us, and often they are accentuating and anointing the natural gift that is within us, within the individual. It might be a singing voice. It might be a speaking voice. It might be organization. All different types of gifts. And the Holy Spirit takes that and anoints it. And we are appointed in the church. But the gifts of the Holy Ghost himself, these are all supernatural and have nothing to do with the natural part of our lives. So as we continue our study of the gift of the Word of Wisdom, we're going to look for a further description and the genesis of this very particular gift of the Holy Spirit. We're going to start in Ephesians chapter 1, and we will be reading in 15 through 19, verses 15 through 19. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling 
and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 19 says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Now I want us to go back over these spiritual insights that are listed in Ephesians chapter 1. Now let's look at them again. It is for the purpose of knowing Jehovah in a deeper manner through the Holy Ghost. What? That the, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So the supernatural gift of wisdom from the Holy Spirit is that we might know the Father and his will in our life. Two, it is for the intention that our spiritual eyesight might be educated in the ways and means of our Savior. Three, specifically, our spiritual eyes are to be opened to three foundational truths of our God. One, the hope of his calling. Two, the riches of his glory. Three, the greatness of his power. C, G, P. Calling, glory, power. That is what wisdom from on high draws our attention to. Our calling, his glory, his power. What God has for us to do, and then everything always comes back to direct our attention to his glory and power. The gift of the word of wisdom deals with our calling. It deals with the glory of God and with the power of God. I don't believe you're going to get a word of wisdom that lacks one of these three elements of revelation. This wisdom that we will receive again is not from here. It is not in my mind. It is not in me but instead comes directly from the Holy Spirit. If it were somehow innate in me, and God were using my intellect, then it would not be a spiritual gift, but it is of the Holy Spirit, just as the gift of faith is not my faith, no one believes, No, I've read no commentary that says that the faith that we have is the gift of faith, nor um, yeah. anything else that we see. We should look at the gifts of the Spirit as being completely separate from our humanity. They are from the Holy Ghost. Therefore, when a word of wisdom is sent to us, it will be deal either with our calling of God, which he's chosen for us before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1.4 says, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That's our calling. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love, the Bible says, or of his glory or his power, that he has chosen us to know of this. This wisdom will always direct us to his will for our lives, Amen. his glory, and his power. That's what his wisdom, what his gift of wisdom does. Let's look at 2 Timothy 1 9. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9, who have saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So before anything was founded in this universe, God already had a calling for my life and for your life. That's hard for our minds to get wrapped around, but that is how far in advance God plans. Before anything is done, he already knows the outcome. 
And here specifically, it's not according to our works. So what I do as a preacher is not according to my works. And this is something vitally important for us. And this is where we get on dangerous ground. We tread, we must tread lightly and with sovereign respect, respect for God's power, that our ability, pastor, teacher, evangelist, no matter what the office is, we must never think that what we have learned in a school prepares us for it. It is the Holy Ghost. If you believe for an instant what you learned in Bible college or seminary prepares you for the Holy Ghost ministry, then you have read the word a wrong instead of a right. No matter what Paul did before his calling to be an apostle, he understood the word of God. He understood it completely. He was educated above other men, highly favored amongst the Jews. But what did he say? I count it all done. So we need to be careful when we look at education and try to say, well, you know, uh, if it hadn't been for the seminary degree, well, I just wouldn't be who I am. Oh, trust me, God can get you to where you need to be without a seminary degree. Just ask A.W. Tozer. C.H. Spurgeon, another one comes to my mind. It seems like there's some pretty well-known men of God who have done it without it. Because it's not a career it's a calling. It's not a job. It's a calling of God, which is without repentance. You don't get to retire from it. You don't just to give. Don't get to give it up. And this is the same. Goes the very same for every believer that is used by the gifts of the Spirit. It's not what we think we learned at our grandma and grandpa's feet. It's not what we learned at the dinner table when dad or mom cracked open the Bible and began to read a chapter or two. It's not what we heard at bedtime. It is God himself. Oh, we may have been prepared to receive what God has for us, but it's what he gives to us that prepares us for his calling. Let's go to John, Gospel of John, chapter 17, 24. Look, I'm old-fashioned. I apologize if I sound like I'm beating up on particular things. I'm saying we cannot rely upon it. If C.H. Spurgeon didn't rely upon it, that didn't mean he didn't read. He read. The, as far as we know, his library was as big as anyone's. But he did not rely upon someone saying, this is what this means. He read the Bible. He read copious commentary that contradicted one another sometimes, prayed and received of God. And did a pretty good job of it, too, since he's considered the prince of preachers over the past few hundred years. Gospel of John 17, 24, Father... I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. I want us to get it. There is an underlying theme in the Bible of before. Remember that everything that we are doing, God already ordained before. The glory of Christ was before the foundation of the world. Our calling was before the foundation of the world. So God didn't just 
by happenstance say, I'm going to choose him. That little guy, Steve Williams, he's five. I'm going to go and speak to him. Yeah, I know he's little. I'm going to speak to him at five like I did to Samuel. And I'm going to call him to the ministry now. He didn't think of that at the time because I looked like I was supple before him. He had already ordained it before the foundation of the world. And he's done the same thing to each and every one of us. Thank you, Jesus. But it is that we may what? Behold his glory. One calling, glory, power. Calling, glory, power. Let's go to Matthew 22, 29. Matthew 22, 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. You are in error, you Pharisees, you Sadducees, all of you self-righteous. You do not know the power of God. And these are two separate things. I want us to remember God's scripture and his power. Because it is his power that established the scriptures. We would not have the scriptures, and the scriptures would mean nothing were they not backed up by the surety of God's power. That is what makes them alive, is the power of God. I want to address what I believe to be what's a common mistake in the interpretation of the word of wisdom and its use for the church or the individual. Too often, as with uh, Ferdinand Bauer, the next slide, Sister Kim, um, this gentleman said that the, um, as he was commenting about the gift of wisdom, refers to grasping a deeper meaning of scripture. That's what he believed. And I don't hold to it. Uh, Meyer's commentary, next slide, Heinrich Meyer, both of these men were German uh, preachers and commentators. His New Testament commentary said regarding Bauer's stance on the gift of wisdom is having a deeper understanding of the Bible, he said, chiefly through allegorical exegesis, which is totally without proof. In other words, uh, Bauer thought that it would uh, you were understanding the Bible in a better way. That's not the gift of wisdom. That is within your own mind, and that is your own ability and reaching out in faith. The gift of the word of wisdom is supernatural, as all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Supernatural. Let's get natural wisdom out of our minds. Let's get that idea that we're just talking about, uh, well, wisdom dictates that I be slow to wrath. That's what the Bible says. So we know that's good wisdom. There's so many great bits of wisdom that we can use out of the Bible that will direct our daily lives. But this gift of wisdom, on the other hand, is a supernatural bit of comprehension, of knowledge that we did not have, that we need for our calling, that we may see the glory and the power of God, that we may be used by Him. These three categories of the gift of the word of wisdom may not at first seem apparent, but if we'll take the time to study the circumstances, the details of what wisdom God gave to us, we will see that this wisdom pertains to our calling, including all things which support our calling, both spiritual and natural. Or this wisdom will reveal to us God moving on our behalf through his glory and power. So let's look at a practical application of the gift of wisdom 
for natural circumstances. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 28, verses 2 and 3. Exodus 28, verses 2 and 3. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. I filled him with the spirit of wisdom. Of course, the spirit of wisdom is the Holy Ghost. And I've read commentary that has ignored this completely and have said, in fact, that it was natural wisdom because they were going to do something natural. They weren't just doing anything of the natural. They weren't just going to be making some clothes. These were going to be the garments of the high priest. The man who would stand before God on the great day of atonement year by year the man who would take the human and thuman stones and would throw them down and believe that the Holy Ghost would speak by the arrangement of those stones. This would be the man of God that would have pomegranates around the bottom of his robe. Small bells. Just in case. If he was without or he was with sin when he went into the Holy of Holies on that great day, that if he died, those bells, of course, would stop ringing and they would pull him out by the rope tied around his ankle. He was making those garments. These men were making those garments. I have filled, well, praise God, with the spirit of wisdom. Let's go to Exodus 31 and 1. And we will specifically hear again what God is saying. 31, we're going to be going through verse 3. Listen to this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Urah, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. For him to do what he had to do for God's appointed office, he had to have the Holy Ghost giving him wisdom and understanding and in the gift of knowledge that God would just drop it into him. manner of workmanship that he would be doing. The gift of wisdom is not earthly by any measure. It does not start here. Instead, it is heavenly and it speaks to the abilities of God for his holy character. It is not about us. It is about him. Again, all of the gifts of the Spirit and severally as he will, going back to that point, when where and who. Severally as he wills. Not permanently. Not permanently. But severally as he will. When, where, and who. God does it for the purpose of what? That we will know his abilities, his power, his glory, and that we will fulfill the calling because we have to have help to fulfill the calling of God in our lives. Proverbs 3.19 Proverbs 3.19 The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding he hath established the heaven. So see, you're talking about the ability, the wisdom that we're talking about from the Holy Ghost is beyond anything any human being knows. The wisest man on earth, Solomon, did not necessarily have the gift of the Word 
of wisdom. God still retained that because human wisdom is not God's wisdom. We're going to be reading about that. Let's go to Psalm 104, 24. 104 and verse 24. O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Think about this. God's wisdom was the creative process or part of the creative process of the universe. The gift of the word of wisdom is God giving to you and to me to comprehend his calling for us by his supernatural works, for his glory and by his power. So God gets glory and he reveals his power and it is done through our calling and it's all supernatural. By this word of wisdom we are enabled to follow in his way for very specific purposes. It will be as though a veil has been lifted from our eyes and from our mind that we can clearly see what God is doing and intending to do. This word of wisdom may be for our personal use or it may also be for others, a family, a group, the local church or the whole of the church. This gift of wisdom uh, may often be associated with the creation of something, a study, a move, or a movement, a church plant, a mission, a new direction which God has for us. All of these require is wisdom. You say, well, it sounds more like knowledge. Well, no, wisdom is about the when and the where and the how. Anybody can plant a church. I said, anybody can take a name and go and plant a church. Anybody. But it takes the wisdom of the Holy Ghost to know for a fact where it's supposed to be. When it's supposed to be. How it is supposed to be. Otherwise, it doesn't look much different than the modern business models. Ask McDonald's, they've been doing it for seven decades. One McDonald's after another. And now, instead of just building more, they're building them differently, different models. Now, self-service is the big deal. You've got your app. You can order, walk in, pick it up, and leave. You can go up to the kiosk, hit the screen, get it exactly the way you want to. You don't have to worry about somebody's interpretive skills in taking your order. That's natural business, and some churches, well, they plant churches in the natural and not by the spiritual leadership of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you what, you want success, you better make sure God is behind it. What is the most important thing to remember about the gift of the word of wisdom is that it is not from here below, but it comes from the Father the Holy Spirit. Amen. No, there's no way to get around it. It is that. James 1.17 James 1.17 Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good gift and every perfect gift. In other words, every gift that we receive upon earth comes from him, and every perfect gift, all of it comes from above. The perfect gifts are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, those things gifted directly into our hearts. 
and it comes from the Father of lights. And there is no variableness. It cannot change. Therefore, he has always been doing this as we see with those that were working on the garments of Aaron. Those that worked upon the tabernacle of the wilderness were anointed by the Holy Ghost. Not, they did not rely upon their own abilities. Did they normally do that work? Yes, but it did not prepare them for what God desired. And he had to anoint them and he had to give them wisdom for the projects. Otherwise, why would it be mentioned? It, meant, it is mentioned, it is told to us. Why? so that we would gain understanding that God is not after the best. He's already told us that he chooses the weak. He chooses the foolish to confound the wise. He chooses the weak to confound the strong, friends. God's not out for the smartest, the best in anything. God wants to use a vessel and show his glory and his power revealed through their life. So if it's about my mind, then every genius should be a believer. Albert Einstein had to be a believer because he was a genius. But isn't it amazing? He's used men with, well, less than stellar intelligence and less than a great education to preach his word effectively to have his anointing. Billy Graham already was preaching and he was told by an elder, you're not getting the Bible college education because you need to know how to preach. You already know how to do that. You're already anointed. Anointed people are coming and getting saved. You're doing it for man. And I'm here to tell you doing it for man doesn't matter. Doing it for God does. Because if man requires more than God, it is out of his order and out of his will. I'm going to say that again. If man requires more than God, then it's out of order. That board in that church that were looking at the resume of young A.W. Tozer, and they said, no, we don't want him as a pastor. He's got no experience and he's got no education. And one man looked at him and recognized the passion and the leadership. He said, I believe if we give him the opportunity, he will obey God and he will do the work. They did. And it happened. And A.W. Tozer is now without a formal education and some say yes. You could see it within his writing. He was not the best of writers, just like I'm not the best of writers. That shows for a man who's not got a college education. But guess what? God didn't care a whit that he had an education. What he cared about was that he was obeying him and he knew the ways of the Holy Ghost. Yes. That is why he wanted it. Glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is from him, not from the world. If it were from the world, then it would all work, it would all be great, and all the churches would be full of gospel believers. Oh, but wait. There's wolves in the midst, and there's goats everywhere in the church worldwide. Why? Because they're trying to do it here instead of by God in here. So I stand and I will not be corrected. I don't care by whom. It is better to please God than to please man. It is better to have his education than man's education. I don't care how good the school is. I don't care how well they teach it. It can never be a replacement for God the Holy Ghost leading and guiding. 
if you want to get it and you can still be led by the Holy Spirit, please do. But never think that the Holy Ghost can't come in and wipe out what you've learned because what you learned may not be what he wants you to know. Because maybe you thought the Holy Ghost isn't even moving anymore and he's still tugging at your heartstrings. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 12, 11, our final verse for the night. 1 Corinthians 12 and 11. But all of these work of that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man separately as he will. Doesn't sound like it's up to me. Doesn't sound like to me it's the most educated. It doesn't. It's the body. You would say, well, God would never give over here to this little common guy over here that was, oh, he's just a farmer. God's never going to give a spiritual gift to a farmer. You better watch out. Because let me tell you what, I've known some men of God that were farmers. And farming didn't have anything to do with the Word of God. It was how they made a living. It was how they fed their family. I knew a man of God that was a used car salesman. God doesn't much care how we make money if we have to be bivocational. What he cares is, is that we will obey him. Christian, God wants you and all of you. Preacher, teacher, deacon, elder, trustee, just a member. Maybe you're the greeter. Maybe you like to witness. Maybe you don't have any specific office at all. God wants you. He wants your heart. He wants to be able to speak to you and give you his word of wisdom that will open up a pathway where you can see and have revealed to you his glory and his power. Because God loves to prove himself to his children so that they will trust in him more, so that they will be willing to step out on a limb. Let me tell you what. Some of the greatest men of faith were never a preacher. One man comes to mind in Australia. His son became a preacher, a revivalist, if you will. And all he did was pray and read the Bible and go to church. So dedicated was he to going to assemble together that even during what clearly appeared to be a flood and his wife and his son and then the rest of his children said, Dad, there's probably not going to be anybody else there. We don't know that, Dad says. How do we know there's not going to be but it doesn't matter. I'm going to church because that is what the Bible tells me to do. So he got them in their Jeep, drove, and the creek that they had to go over was flooded. And as they got over there, the water was up to the tops of their tires, and it was spinning, and they just barely got through past that got to church no one was there not even the pastor but he was he and his family and his son said what are we going to do now dad we're going to have church because that's what we're here for I mean, you say well that just sounds hyper hyper religious no that's a spirit of devotion that is someone that has said, I know the call that is on my life. I know what God requires of me. It would to God that every single believer felt the same way their entire life. If we would, the churches would be full. The pulpits would be anointed for every single service. Preachers wouldn't run out of anything to preach about, which is an impossibility because the Holy Ghost never dries up. 
That's just a man just not seeking me. Don't believe the lie that the gifts of the Spirit are dead first. We must believe that they're alive because God the Holy Ghost is alive. Two, don't believe that it is from the natural mind. All of the gifts of the Spirit are supernatural just as the fruit of the Spirit is supernatural. It does not live within us. It is a gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I believe an old-fashioned way. I may not look old-fashioned. I may not have that shirt so tight that my Adam's apple is popping out. I may not have my long sleeves on tonight. I may not have a three-piece suit on like my dad used to wear. But I still believe in God leading and guiding every Christian. I believe in holiness and I believe in righteousness and I believe in 100% dedication. As one of our members here, our Treasury Secretary, Bobby Hester, said in last night's service, he said, not one minute of my time belongs to me. It belongs to God. Not one dollar of the money I have belongs to me. It belongs to God. It's for His use. If every believer in every church across this globe felt the same way as that, yeah. guess what? The gospel would be re-increased as it should be. Right. Missionaries would have no shortage of funds. Amen. No local missions would be short. Everyone would be fully funded. All of the places that seek to give refuge from abortion, giving women an opportunity to save a life instead of kill a life, giving men and women a chance to get out of from underneath the addiction of alcohol and drugs and sex. If we were doing it with all of our might, God would truly have glory. If we still believed in healing and we're not afraid to pray for it, and we fully believed God would have glory because he wants to reveal his power. He wants his power at work with his people. He wants his power to work through his people because he gets glory every step of the way. Every minute of the day. That's what he wants from us. That is what his gifts of the Holy Spirit are. Particularly this gift of the word of wisdom which reveals in us our calling, his glory, his power. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Your word is so simple. It's direct. It's not hidden from us. Uh, it's not beyond the simple. It's not beyond the uneducated, the ones that didn't make it past third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, or never went to high school, never went to college. Everyone can understand it if they pray and ask the Holy Ghost. Yes, I still believe it, Father, that we ask you for the understanding. God, I just thank you that you open up these things to us as you did to me. Lord, it wasn't. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm no college graduate, and I know it's apparent to everyone. I didn't go to seminary, but I've been through your Bible many times. And Lord God, I've got a, a library of men that I've trusted, and I, and I read and I pray, and you've opened up your word to me. 
God, I ask that each and every one of us that were open to your word and we read it simply, we read it for what it says, just take it for what it says. God, we want that in our churches. And Lord, then give us the strength and the wherewithal and the faith that we may believe upon your gifts. That we will trust in the gifts of the Spirit because they are vital to your church. They grow us as individuals and they grow us corporately. Anoint our hearts and minds for your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight uh, here at Center Hill Missionary Baptist Church in this Gospel of Deliverance Higher and Deeper service. That's every Monday night, 6 o'clock Central Time, right here at Center Hill. Good night. God bless. Goodbye.